Welcome to the Global Impact Virtual Conference hosted by ISTE Community Leaders. My name is Jess Marsh. I'm the founder and director of INTL Education, a community interest company in the United Kingdom. And I'm from California, currently living in England. This session, World Schooling Quest Empowerment Hubs, focuses on transformational experiences through meaningful projects that you can do with your children, students, or nonprofit organizations. It's all about empowering teachers with time and empowering students with real world impact. Uh, with me today are two lovely, amazing human beings <laughs> that I'm so grateful to be working with. Um, Adnan, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Of course, uh, my name is Adnan Ifakar. I'm the CEO of Catalyst Consulting. Uh, like Jess, I'm a Google certified innovator, a Google champion, and uh, I also like to call myself an AI humanist, uh, where I look at uh, all the different things that are going on in AI and how it can help. And I'll use Mark's words in this, expand or maybe extend our consciousness and our, and our ability to do more. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Mark Prinsky. Uh, I am the founder of the Global Institute for Empowerment, Accomplishment and Impact by Young People. And I try to help young people and teachers and every adult understand all the things that are coming in the new third millennium that we're just starting and how different they are from the past and how much we have to adapt. Brilliant. Thank you both so much for being here. We've broke this session into three parts for you. I will speak about globalizing. Adnan will speak about investing and Mark will wrap us up with empowering. And I knew my corporate job at Google for Education was coming to an end. I sat down and thought about what do I really want to do with my life? And I wonder if you're thinking about that as well. How do you really want to spend your time? And how would you like to leave your legacy in this world? I did a lot of research and a lot of thinking and found the concept of world schooling. Well, this basically means using the world as your classroom. We hope you join us to become a part of this no matter where you are, no matter if you're traveling and learning as you go, or if you're just exploring in your local area and looking out in your backyard or garden on what you could learn from your immediate context. We want to give the same opportunities to those both in traditional educational systems and alternate education systems and everything in between. Um, those that have the ability to travel and those that don't, we want to give access through virtual digital environments so that everyone can experience intercultural connections that inherently develop empathy. This has always been important to us. So as a Google certified innovator, it was my uh, aim many years ago to start working on this kind of literacy project co to connect people in different places. And we're still on that same mission to do this, and we hope that you will join us. As an international educator working in schools in different countries for more than 18 years, and recently being in the ed tech space, I've realized that the traditional school system is no longer fit for purpose for most children. And we want to enhance the student or child experience of learning uh, by changing the idea of global education to global action. We can empower children and let them lead their accomplishments as we as parents or teachers become the facilitators to allow them to get involved in projects that have meaningful and measurable positive impact. How many of you are parents? 
my husband and I are both educators and wanted to develop something for our five-year-old son to experience that was is beyond anything that we've ever had a chance to do. We want to allow those opportunities for all children as well. So if you are a parent or a teacher that wants to facilitate experiences for your children, please join us and learn more about the idea and power of world schooling. As teachers and perhaps parents, I imagine you also might feel that you don't have time to actualize your dreams and ideas, but Adnan is here to help with that. Thank you for that intro, Jess. <laughs> I, uh, I'm excited to learn even more about world schooling and, uh, and how that can relate to some of the work that I'm doing and also that I invite you all to look at into as well. Um, and uh, I want to introduce the FAD framework that uh, the three of us in our uh, introductory calls uh, started to co-create together. Um, this really is a concept that's dear to me, and I think that you will find value in this as well. Uh, it's around taking the time to free up uh, your time-wasting activities or time-spending activities, I like to call, uh, and how you can uh, create opportunities to invest your time rather than spend your time doing certain things. For example, spending time on social media um, is, is, is exactly that. It's spending the time just like you would spend money. Uh, and uh, whereas when you are working out, you're investing in your future. You're investing that as a 90 year old, you'll be able to walk and maybe even run through the woods uh, at that time. So really, being conscious and intentional about where you're spending your time or whether you are investing your time. Uh, and then the second portion of this is the augmentation, taking technology and artificial intelligence to augment tasks, to automate tasks, so you can augment your capabilities and output to create, as Mark likes to call it, more time for yourself. We have a little disagreement there. Maybe Mark can chime in on this, but um, but I think that time is a finite resource. You only have so much and you can only get so much. Uh, and uh, and I'll let Mark argue his point. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't disagree with that. The, 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 the important point is that you can do more with each piece of time you have. You can do more per second, more per minute, more per hour. And that's what the augmentation provides. I love that. Thank you for uh, for for elaborating and being so eloquent with it, Mark. I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, and then the last portion, which is uh, where I think the three of us really connect, is dream uh, in terms of staying excited and uh, and passionate and really caring about the work and the play that you're doing um, and instantiating those dreams right now, rather than waiting for some time in the future. Uh, in terms of learning in advance versus learning and experiencing right now to create and change the world in a positive way. And so I would add that we framework. don't want this to be a fad. This is not a fad with the name is fad, but hopefully it won't be a fad. It will be something that everybody does permanently. It's a fad to stay. So in terms of, in terms of that, um, in that, in that, in that framework, thinking about the dreams, Thinking about actualizing or creating or instantiating these student dreams, asking, it st all starts with asking the right questions. Um, and these are things that, uh, that are not asked of students often. What are your dreams? What are your concerns? What do you want to solve? What do you care about that you want to change or in a positive manner in the world? And thinking about it in terms of, what you can do, like the imagination, the things that are uh, innovative. Um, what can you do right now than just thinking about what is possible, right? Dream into the future. Google has this uh, idea of moonshot thinking that I was introduced to, at least when I was at Google, and it is really around shooting for the moon. 
And even if you don't get to the moon, even if you get halfway, you're going to go much further than if you shot for the top of, let's say, Mount Everest, right? <laughs> so thinking about what is rather than what is possible, what is impossible in certain ways or extending and innovating. And again, coming back to that time of investing the time, time is the only non-renewable resource. So invest it in student chosen world improving projects that are going to create a better future for everybody. Thanks, Adnan. So Mark, how do we navigate and prepare for this change? Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Prensky. I want to emphasize how much things are changing and in a particular direction in the third millennium, what I call the third millennium that's just starting uh, right now. When all of us grew up in the second millennium, we were all about educating young people, which was putting things into their heads. And that was very important. There was not easy access to most of what was in the world. And so we spent a lot of time, 6, 12, 20 years doing that. The big change is that in the third millennium, it's going to be about bringing things out of kids' heads. We have our young people full of imagination, full of things we've never seen before, but that we need to see. And now we have so many more ways to bring those out and instantiate them. So that's really where things are going and why we need this world schooling. We need to move from what we have had, which can really be described as learning in advance. That's what we did. We didn't have young people out there accomplishing. We had them sitting in classes learning for a long time and always in advance. But now we're moving to a new stage in the third millennium of empowerment. And we define empowerment, and we hope you will too, as I can, I choose, I accomplish, and I see positive real world impact. And unless you know that you can and have done all these things, you are not fully empowered. So those are the things you need to work on. I can means we want to empower our students to recognize and believe in their own abilities to make a difference. I choose is fostering a sense of agency, allowing all students to choose their own projects and make their own curriculum based on their own dreams and interests. Accomplish is actually doing something in the real world, which doesn't happen much in our schools now. Even project-based learning is usually just not real, but authentic. We need real. Our students need to be able to accomplish things and make an impact on the world, which leads to the idea of positive results. They need to be able to say, see that? Before, it was not good or it didn't exist. And now, because of what I and my team have done, it's so much better, as you can see. That is something that will be much more prevalent in the world of our young people's future. And your invitation today is to help make that happen. The places where these real-world projects get done are called empowerment hubs which can be in-person or virtual and can be part of any world schooling effort. Let me give you just three examples. Uh, the first one is about preschool kids, what they can actually do in the world. And we'll show you that video, which is really inspiring in a second. Another example is middle school kids who have been able to design prosthetic hands and arms for kids who don't have them. Not only design them, but print them through 3D printers. And not only print them, but use their social media abilities to go out into the world and find the young people who need them. So they are making real world custom prostheses for the young people who need them. And the third is a high school example, which just happened. 
NASA has this CubeSat program where it will launch student-created CubeSats into space. And a lot of that happens in the universities and colleges. But just recently, a school in California, a high school, was chosen by NASA to launch their CubeSat that this, these high school kids have made into space. And that's going to happen very shortly. Now we can look at this video of preschool kids in Spain who had a problem. So there's an organization in the world called Design for Change. It was started in India by a woman named Kiran Sethi, and it's now in more than 70 countries. And it's all teachers doing real world projects with their students. And if you want to be connected to Design for Change, that's something that we can really help you with. Their website is dfcworld.org. What I think is going to be the case for young people in the third millennium is that the legacy that they will leave is not just who they are. And we all want our young people to be good people, of course, but it's what they accomplish. That's what the world will see. That's what the world will remember. And now we are in, entering into a time where every young person can leave a positive legacy in the world starting when they are students. That's what world schooling is all about. So if you'd like to enhance your life, uh, better your practice, and be in a global, empowering, time-conscious, real-world accomplishing environment, please join us. We are an organization that connects funders, coaches, volunteers, and more to get real world projects off the ground. So if you are a school or organization, we can help your projects to get funded. So please connect. We look forward to seeing your projects and your ideas. Thanks again for watching this session as part of the Global Impact Virtual Conference hosted by ISTE Community Leaders. Please watch other sessions, including those pre-recorded and those offered live. You can join in the conversation throughout the conference on ISTE Connect and on social media using those hashtags. We hope to connect with you there. Thanks so much for watching.